question here from magic the dude chef um some foods have a decent amount of protein by the numbers but you know they have a very low quality protein such as collagen when tracking macros how should we account for this low quality protein um you know that's a good question um and collagen is honestly a terrible protein uh if you're looking at it from a muscle protein synthesis perspective uh most uh, quality scores for it are literally zero uh, because it has a complete and utter lack of tryptophan. So like if you were just going to look isolated, a dose of collagen for promoting muscle protein synthesis, it's a, a rubbish protein. However, um, within the context of a whole day of intake and a whole bunch of different protein sources, and in most cases, some very high quality protein sources that have an abundance of tryptophan, um, slipping in a little bit of low quality protein here and there, uh, is not necessarily that bad, whether it's a little bit of collagen here and there, uh, some of the lower quality plant-based protein. So like soy is a very high quality protein from plant, but you know, you start looking down the list at some of the lower quality ones and you start to really think like, I don't know, this amino acid profile is pretty weak, but Overall, I say my general inclination is to count it as protein and just to make sure that your total daily protein intake is adequate, you, you know, relative to your goals and to make sure that you have a good mixture of proteins in your diet. So uh, I don't necessarily see a problem with counting a, you know, fairly low quality protein toward your daily total, as long as it's not making up a huge proportion of, of your total daily intake. Um, you know, so for example, tying this back into the idea of vegetarian and vegan diets, you know, you can take two low to moderate quality proteins that have complementary amino acid profiles, put them together and end up in a really good spot in terms of muscle protein synthesis. So I, I don't like to promote the idea of really micromanaging amino acid profiles, but of course, looking at your diet in its totality, you want to make sure that you have enough protein and you want to make sure that you don't have glaring weaknesses with regards to any particular essential amino acid. So if you're getting, you know, 60% of your daily protein from collagen, that sucks. That, that's a bad plan, but I, I don't know if it makes sense to have the, this kind of dueling count going on throughout the day where you're counting this subtotal of high quality proteins and this sub uh, subtotal of low quality proteins and things like that. So I'd still count it toward your, your total daily protein, but I would encourage you to try to make sure that you either have a diet that is rich in high quality proteins or rich in proteins that are complementary in nature when it comes to their amino acid profile. I, I can tell you exactly. I mean, my, uh, experience with, with using collagen protein, yeah, it, basically exactly what you're describing. So I, um, I started using uh, uh, just like gelatin powder in my meal prep, maybe like two or three months ago. Um, so one of the things that happens to me when I'm in a calorie deficit is just like I get joint aches all the time. I don't know why, but like they say, like, ah, if you lose weight, your joints will feel better. I got to I got to say one of the reasons why, uh, especially when I'm training hard, I tend to want to be in a moderate to sometimes quite aggressive surplus is that shit makes my joints feel good. And like you take calories away and like my hips ache, my knees ache. Now that I fucking broke my arm earlier this year, my wrist and my elbow ache, those are new. Um, and so uh, I, I saw some of the, um, the research that's been published on collagen synthesis with like collagen or, or gelatin supplementation uh, and just thought like, you know what? It can't, it can't hurt. It can't hurt. Like I'll give it a shot. Uh, just, just throw some gelatin powder in my meal prep. Uh, I, I mostly eat like rice based dishes, like rice and lean protein. Um, so like, yeah, I'll just throw some collagen in, make sure it dissolves, uh, might help if nothing else, uh, might improve the mouth feel, like make it taste a little bit more like luscious and luxurious. Um, and so I just put like a hundred grams of gelatin powder in, like in with the water uh, when the rice is about to cook. Uh, and subjectively, one, it, it seems to have been helping my joints. They feel better. Don't know if the two are related, not an RCT. Don't necessarily take it as advice, but my personal experience, pretty positive. Um, 
Second, in terms of just like how I account for it, it it's basically what you're describing. So uh, my most recent meal prep, which I did last night, big old batch of kanji, uh, a lot of pork, um, and like 117 grams of collagen. And so the, the whole kit and caboodle has like 740 grams of protein in total. And each serving of it will probably give me about 55 grams of protein, give or take. Um, and of that, like three quarters of it probably is from the pork. And then there's enough rice that like a non-trivial amount of it is from the rice, uh, a little bit from some mushrooms, and then uh, about a seventh of the total protein in what I'm consuming comes from the collagen I added. So of those 55 grams of protein, probably like around 40 or slightly under is, is coming from animal protein. And from there, I, I figure like, ah, I'm set for the meal. And then uh, maybe some slightly lower quality uh, plant proteins. Um, and then, you know, of, of the 55 grams, probably eight of them are coming from the collagen and like i don't know it's probably not as i I think i'm consuming enough protein that having slightly lower like 55 grams per meal is more than sufficient and so if i replaced those seven eight grams of of gelatin with more pork or chicken or whatever i don't know that i'd really get anything out of it and uh i mean like you said I just don't want to micromanage my shit. So um, with with the addition of that, like I kept my daily protein targets the same. So the amount of quote unquote high quality protein I'm eating per day has probably decreased by 12 grams maybe. Yeah. And like, I'm fine with that. I subjectively, it doesn't really seem to, to be making a difference in terms of like muscle retention. Uh, and then subjectively joints seem to feel pretty good. So I don't know. seems okay. Yeah. And I think a, another thing that contributes to this, um, cause I get this type of question a lot, something that contributes to it is I think a lot of people make, uh, dichotomies in their head about protein sources. They're either a high quality animal based, uh, protein source or a low quality plant based protein source. And they kind of just look at a protein source and say it's either high quality or low quality, should I count the low quality? But realistically, it's a continuous spectrum. And some of your animal sources for protein are not as high quality as your other animal sources. And there are some very high quality plant sources and some very low quality plant sources. And so what I kind of think about in my head is like you hold up this list of protein quality scores and say, draw me the line where it doesn't count anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very, very hard to do that. It's our favorite dichotomizing continuous variables. Right. But it's, it's very hard to draw your line. And especially when you consider the fact that you take a low quality protein and a low quality protein with complementary profiles and all of a sudden you're, you're looking pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, going source by source can be very difficult, but I do, Uh, encourage people to look at their diet in its entirety. And like Greg said, make sure that your collagen is not, you're not doing collagen instead of chicken, right? Or instead of pork or whatever, whatever the meal was, it's uh, collagen along with, you know, some of your higher quality sources. The other thing I note as well is just uh, um, a practice that I've heard from several people like engaging in recently is just the idea of you know, when it comes to counting your your protein for the day, kind of sticking with uh, like research based protein targets, like shooting for 1.6 grams per kilo or, or whatever it is, 1.6, 1.8. Um, but then as far as counting your protein goes, only counting the high quality protein sources. So, you know, I'm going to make sure that I'm getting 1.6, 1.8 grams per kilo of protein per day. Uh, but I'm only going to count like the eggs and chicken and milk, or if you're vegetarian, the soy, maybe the mycoprotein and and everything else, just basically not counting it towards your protein targets for the day. A a point that, that I always mention when I see that is the, um, like the protein, the research derived protein recommendations that exist, exist in the context 
generally of mixed diets. Right. So, you know, if they're saying that like, ah, somewhere in the neighborhood of a gram per pound or like 1.8 grams per kilo, like somewhere in that general vicinity, uh, the research is saying that like, ah, that's probably enough to maximize hypertrophy or muscle retention in a deficit and eh, maybe slightly higher for that, but whatever. Like all of those targets are based on studies where people are eating mixed diets. Like in those studies, they're not exclusively counting high quality proteins. And so like, that's the context that those, uh, that those recommendations are derived from. And so if you're basing your targets on 1.8 grams per kilo of only high quality protein, there's probably nothing necessarily bad with that. But if you're doing that because your dietary targets are being informed by the research, your protein, if you want to make an apples to apples comparison between your diet and the research that you're basing it on, you are consuming higher protein levels uh, than, you know, is, is necessarily being recommended and that you are using as your targets. And, and again, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with eating slightly higher levels of protein, but um, if you wanted to go about counting using that method, you could probably justify slightly lower protein targets just because some protein is going to come along for the ride and virtually everything you eat. So if that is just the way that you prefer to count, a slightly lower daily protein target, maybe if you're an omnivore like to 1.4, 1.5, grams per kilo would probably be more justifiable. Like if you are only counting the high quality protein, you probably don't need to shoot for quite 1.8 grams per kilo just, just because like that, that's not how the research was done that those, right. uh, that those recommendations were derived from. And just for context, I, I wish I had the type of memory where I could give exact numbers, but um, there is a nice paper I saw the other day that looked at, you know, in a typical diet in this region, what percentage of protein comes from plants and what percent comes from animal sources. It's very likely that when you look at the studies that we're getting protein recommendations from, like you said, the individuals are eating mixed diets with a mixture of higher and lower quality protein sources, probably like 40%, uh, depending on the region of that protein is coming from plants that, that tend to have lower quality scores. So like you said, I think a lot of times we assume, oh, I need to make sure I'm getting 1.6 grams per kilogram of the high quality stuff to match this literature, when in reality, it, it's very much not matching that literature. 